Hi, I'm Benjamin, and this is my submission to the 3 Blue 1 Brown Summer of Math exposition. In this video, I want to tell you something about distances and how you can use them for estimation. Let's start with an everyday example. Let's say you're watching the weather report and you see temperature predictions at some key cities. However, you don't live in any of those cities, but in some place in between, let's say at this grey location here. Judging from this map, what do you think is the most likely temperature where you live? Is it rather 18 degrees, 22 degrees or 26 degrees? Probably many of you would go with 22 degrees. But why? Can we make a case why 22 degrees is a good estimate? Well, we can just look at the surrounding measurements. If we collect all those and take the average, this is exactly 22 degrees. So we can make an estimate based on known data points that are close. Let's try to generalize this idea. Let's say we have some collection of known objects with some property. And I visualize my objects here as points and the property as color. And now we wish to estimate the color of a new point based on the points we know. A first approach is to look up the nearest neighbor in our data. Then our estimate is that the color is the same. Let's make this more precise. Let's call our new point x and let's call our nearest neighbor y. We call the color of x fx and the color of y fy. Our estimation is that fx is approximately equal to fy. But why stop there? We can also collect multiple nearest neighbors. In this case, I used four of them and denoted them as y1, y2, y3 and y4. To estimate the color fx, we can then take the average color of those four points. This gives us a slightly orangey yellow. It's a compromise of the yellow of y1, y2 and y4, as well as the orange of y3. Still, there are two problems with this estimation approach. First, it seems kind of arbitrary whether we consider 1, 2, 3, 4 or any other number of nearest neighbors. Second, we should take into account that some of these nearest neighbors are closer than others. And it would be reasonable to say that the closest neighbor should probably have more influence on our estimate than a neighbor that is further away. So let's try to solve both problems. First, we will from now on integrate all our points in our estimation. And we will write the distance from some point y to x as dyx. Our estimate for fx then is the sum over all colors fy divided by the respective distance to x. So points that are closer to x have more influence on the estimate. Points that are further away have less influence. I try to visualize this by drawing thicker arrows for points that are closer and thinner arrows for points that are further away. Unfortunately, our estimation doesn't quite work yet. Look at our estimated color fx. It's almost red, even though all close neighbors are yellow. So what has gone wrong? The issue is that our estimate is not normalized. If we add more points to our estimate, it just grows and grows because we keep adding more stuff. To get this under control, we need to divide by the number of all influences. Then we get a nice yellowish orangey color, as expected. I even got some more pretty pictures for you. Here I have made the estimation not only for a single point x, but for all possible points in a grid. If we only consider a single nearest neighbor, we get regions around each point y with the same color as y itself. These regions include all points x where y is the closest neighbor. If we consider four neighbors, we get more regions. This is because we cross into a new region whenever at least one of our four nearest neighbors changes. This happens more frequently than with a single neighbor. And because only a single neighbor changes between regions, our average does not change that much, so the regions are more similar in color. Finally, for our distance weighting scheme, we see a smooth color gradient around each point, which slowly fades out into orange. Why is that? If you go far away from all known points, all distances become roughly equal. Therefore, all points have roughly equal influence on our estimate, which means that our estimate is just the average color, which happens to be orange in this case. Conversely, if we go very close to a single point y, 
the distance to y becomes almost zero, its influence gets close to infinite, and our estimate becomes exactly fy. Ok, so now we know how to estimate using only distances as a tool. Next, I want to argue that distances are actually much more general than you might think. Until now, we just drew a straight line between two points and measured its length to get a distance. But we can also use other kinds of distances. For example, consider text. Here I have two words, inline and airplane. We can measure a distance between them by counting the letters we need to change to make both words equal. For example, we could remove the first A and P in airplane, and then change the first N in inline to an R, and the second I to an A. Overall, these are four changes, so we would say that the distance between inline and airplane is four. This is also called the edit distance, or Levenstein distance between two words. Or I consider the blue and orange curve in this figure. We could compute a distance between both curves by measuring how much we have to move the orange curve to transform it into the blue curve, which happens to be roughly 1.54 in this case. This is called an optimal transport distance. So we are not limited to points in space. As long as we can invent some kind of meaningful distance between two objects, we can make estimations on these objects. But what are the minimum requirements on a distance to be meaningful? Mathematicians have answered that for us. They define a distance d as a function that maps two objects x and y to a number dxy, such that the following four conditions hold. First, we want our distance to be non-negative, meaning there exists no distance that is smaller than zero. Second, we want that the distance between x and y is zero if x and y are equal, and that the distance is larger than zero if x and i are not equal. So our distance should be able to discern unequal points from each other, but should not discern equal points. Third, we want that our distance is symmetric. If we measure the distance from x to y, it should be the same as the distance from y to x. And finally, we want that our distance conforms to the triangular inequality, which means that there is never a shorter way to get from x to y than the direct way. If you first go from x to some intermediate point z, and then from z to y, this is at least as long as directly going from x to y. So you can invent any distance you like, as long as it conforms to these minimum requirements, using it for estimation will work. At least there will be no weird inconsistencies in your estimates. Still, other things can go wrong. In particular, your distance needs to be related to the property you want to estimate. Let me explain that in more detail. Let's consider a really simple case. We have two known points, y1 and y2, which have a distance of 1. Further, fy1 is 0 and fy2 is 1. Based on this setup, any reasonable estimator would expect that the property f smoothly changes from y1 to y2 in some nice curve. But if your distance is not sufficiently related to f, f may actually change very differently, like in a weird zigzag curve. If that happens, then your estimator will be very inaccurate. Intuitively, we need that two close points also have similar f values. To be more precise, we say that the property f is smooth with respect to distance d, if for any two points x and y, the f values fx and fy are at most as different as their distance dxy, multiplied by some constant kappa. For the experts among you, this is actually the Lipschitz definition of smoothness, and it's a pretty strict form of smoothness, but for our purposes here it's the most intuitive definition, I think. We can also make geometric sense of this smoothness idea. It means that if we move away from y1, our f value should stay within a triangle with slope kappa. The same holds for point y2. Overall, our smoothness criterion requires that f stays within the intersection of both triangles, which is this grey box shape. If we increase kappa, this box becomes larger. If we decrease kappa, it becomes smaller. Roughly speaking, the lower kappa is, the more accurate a distance-based estimator can be. In practice, it can be very hard to check whether a property f is actually smooth with respect to our chosen distance d. But it can be very helpful to think critically about smoothness and whether the distance you're using actually makes sense for your estimation. Otherwise, you may make estimates which may be wrong, 
harmful or even discriminatory, like predicting creditworthiness from geographical distance. I recommend reading up on the term redlining to learn more about this topic. Let's summarize. What I told you in this video is that you can estimate a property fx by considering close points y to x with known value fy. How close y is to x can be measured with the distance dyx. And we have learned that this does not need to be a spatial distance. You can also use fancy distances like the edit distance or optimal transport, or even invent your own distance, as long as the four minimum requirements hold. The distance is non-negative, it can discern unequal points, it is symmetric, and it conforms to the triangular inequality. However, your estimation will only be accurate if the property f is smooth with respect to your distance d, and you need to think critically whether it makes sense to assume this smoothness, as well as your data and how your estimates are going to be used. I hope this helps you to understand how mathematical estimation works and how important distances are for it. Maybe you can even use some of this knowledge in your own projects. Thank you for your time.